Mondays are way busier than I thought that they would be. What's going on, smart people? I know that I made an entire video yesterday on the Google Calendar for the semester. And yesterday, theoretically, on paper, I saw how busy Mondays were. Today, experimentally proven, they are way worse than I thought that they would be. Hence why theory is always more enjoyable than experiment. That's how physics works. You see, let me explain. Today was actually more lax than they should be. The reason for this is that on Mondays, my day starts at 9 a.m. with a two and a half hour quantum mechanics session. The reason for this is my professor has to miss some classes throughout the semester for things like conferences, so we're tacking on extra time on the Monday sessions so that we can make up for it. Today was one of those such days where he had to be on conference, so we didn't have quantum mechanics. But usually it would be quantum from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And then at 12 is when I have quantum field theory. This is how I actually started off the day today, but I got there a couple of hours early just to get some work done. So I had quantum field theory from 12 to 1.15, and for those of you who are curious, what we did was we developed the partition function and the energies for the harmonic oscillator using the path integral. Next week is, or maybe on Wednesday, is when we should actually get into some quantum field theory. <clears throat> so that was cool, that was enjoyable, and then 15 minutes after that ended I had to go to a TA meeting. So this semester is really starting to show me what it's like to be a real grad student as opposed to last semester where I was just taking classes. So I had this TA meeting, and this is what's going to happen every Monday, where we basically talk about what the lab is for the week, and all of the TAs work through it so that we can be as helpful as we can once we actually teach the lab. And that took about half an hour. It probably would have taken longer if Rigo, one of our friends, uh, wasn't so good at explaining it to us so that we didn't have to go through it all from scratch because he'd been there before. So that was really helpful. And then as soon as that ended, I had to go to tutoring. So part of my office hours as a TA, actually my entire office hours as a TA, is me being available during the tutoring hours that are offered at NMSU. So on Mondays from 2 to 3, I have to be tutoring. And so people can just walk in and ask physics questions, and that's also when the people I TA for are able to come in and ask me questions about like the lab or the homeworks, things like that. No one showed up. So there is another case of how today was, it could have been much busier. If I had quantum and people actually wanted to be tutored today, it could have been very hectic. But instead, no one showed up, so I got to spend the time preparing for the SI session, my first time to being a teacher, really, uh, that happened at three o'clock. So I was tutoring from two to three, and then from three to 4.15, I had an SI session where I'm actually the instructor for the supplemental instruction course of engineering physics. So while I was uh, tutoring, I was really just preparing for that. Now for that, I came up with 12 questions for the students to solve that went from things like scientific notation, units, vectors, vector multiplication. They're starting out very basic. Yes, and that's stuff that I did in high school. Yeah, and look at how many people drop engineering. Maybe if people started more basic, people would be more successful in the field. So they're, they're starting super basic with things that, that matter, that you need to have a firm foundation of with what you can and can't do with vectors, you know, making sure your units match, match up. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people just go wrong with the dimensional analysis. So it's a common mistake and I think it's worth emphasizing. So I had a bunch of problems on that and the reason I came up with those in the first place is because I had to look at their homework. So I got to come up with problems that were most, I think, helpful for when they actually go to tackle their homework. So the way that the SI sessions are structured is they just get graded on participation and attendance. So they show up and they try their best and they get a good grade. Uh, it's my job to be as helpful as I can with coming up with problems that are actually relevant to what they're learning in lecture. So what I did, the way that I approached the class was I had to go over the syllabus because this was our first class of the semester. And then I kind of lectured for like 35 minutes, which I didn't mean to do it for so long because I wanted people to have a good idea of what the material is in the way that I would teach it. That way they're ready to problem solve. So I think in the future, I'm gonna cut that down a little bit so that the majority of the class will be them problem solving and asking questions if they need help in the first place rather than me lecturing on things maybe everyone already understands. So I think going into the next next week's SI session, I'll survey the room to see out of the topics that I'm going to be giving them questions on, is there anything they want to be you know, revised before they tackle the problem solving? So we did that. It went really well, I think. I had a, I have an assistant. He's an undergrad who was really helpful today. So all in all, it might not sound like today was super busy, but 
I think it was just the fact of going back and forth of, you know, I had quantum field theory, then immediately after a TA meeting, then immediately after a tutoring, then immediately after SI. Uh, what made it seem very hectic was I didn't know that no one was going to show up to tutoring. I just knew that I had to be in some other place in two minutes, which made it a little bit hectic. At the beginning of the video, I said that Mondays are way worse than I thought that they were. And what I meant to just say is that they were way busier because I kind of enjoy the sense of urgency that today had just to have to get things done and go from point A to point B a bunch of times because that's kind of a mentality that will trickle down throughout the rest of the week. So having my Mondays so front loaded and having so much work done just puts you in this mindset of I've got to get things done and I think that that's a good way, a good mentality to have to start your week off because for the rest of the week it's not going to be as busy as today was but I still have that all right, what am I gonna do next? Kind of thought process, which is nice to have to keep me, to propagate me through the rest of the week, I guess you could say, which is good because I have a lot of work to get done this week. I have quantum field theory due on Wednesday and stat mech due on Thursday, neither of which are done. So I'm gonna go get started on that now. Let me know in the comments section, would you rather have one really, really busy day and then the rest is kind of lax or have it relatively evenly spread out throughout the week? Cause I'm interested in what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comments section and I will see you guys there.